This is the Bold City Podcast. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Masters, the lead pastor at Bold City Church, and I want to welcome you guys to the Bold City Podcast. And I've got some really special guests with me today. First is Tiffany Masters. She is my lovely, beautiful wife. Oh, and sweet. Uh, so it's so awesome to have you here. Don't start. Don't Thanks, start. Boober. Save it for a little Thank bit, you. all right? Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> and we have Steve and Becky Harling, who are some very different dear friends of ours. <laughs> and very different. No? Yes. <laughs> yes. And, Thanks, uh, Jason. And so we're excited to have them. We're going to have a conversation today. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy it and glean something from it. And uh, at the very least, you will be entertained. I'm pretty sure of that. All right. So uh, let's start with this. Uh, let's tell the story how we all met. Can we yeah, do that? That sounds like a good idea. That yeah. sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Let's hear yeah. from somebody else besides me. Tiffany, <laughs> can you tell them how we met? Well, um, so their daughter, Carrie, and her husband, Zach, um, they wound up at our church, and Carrie was leading worship for us. And they came into town one weekend, and we had the honor of meeting them there. And then really just in maintaining a relationship with Carrie and Zach, um, we were able to forge a relationship with these two. And in that process, that was, what, four years ago? Five. Five years ago. Um, they've really become like a set of spiritual parents for, for you and I. And we've been able to come see them and fellowship with them and do ministry with them and our relationships just kind of continue to grow from that. That's right. We yeah. just love you guys. And uh, we're really not old enough to be your parents. No, just kidding. We are. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you guys and we love your kids. And it's so fun to yeah. be together. It is fun. Yeah, it's awesome. It's been cool. It's one of those God things, you know, where God just kind of yeah. brings people together almost seemingly randomly. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's got a purpose for it. And that's cool. Well, and the, the, the thing that's special to me about it is there are a lot of relationships in ministry where he's connected really well mm. to the male, but maybe I don't connect as well to the female yeah. or, you know, vice versa, but husband it's been wife, such yeah. a husband, wife. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's been such a blessing for us to have a relationship with you guys where we, we just connect so naturally on both ends, you know? Yeah. That's, that's always a blessing in our marriages, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, cause sometimes you hear that a lot from couples, like the husbands get along great, but the wives can't stand each other, or maybe they just don't connect, you <laughs> right, know? Right. And, and so it is a blessing cause we love you both yeah. and, and we have so much fun with you. So. Well, and with y'all being in ministry for so many years, yeah. you have so much wisdom that you're able mm. to pour into us, which is great. Absolutely been huge so we we've yeah. had you in a number of times both of you to communicate at the church but also um we have visited them in mm -hmm. colorado yeah. and when, california yeah california as yeah. well and spent some time with them we took uh on our spring retreat last year with bold city college nice time to plug that yep. uh, which <laughs> tiffany is email me if you're interested <laughs> what's your email nice. <laughs> t masters at seu.edu or tiffany at boldcitychurch.com so there nice. you go two of them yeah. uh, but we took our a crew to Colorado, mm -hmm. Colorado Springs yeah. is where you guys live, and uh, to, to hike, and we spent a couple of days pouring into mm -hmm. them and had both of you come over and share. And, and that and was so fun. That. It, was, was awesome. yeah. Yeah, it was. Boy, the room, when when everybody was worshiping, it was mm -hmm. just, you could feel the Holy Spirit there so strongly. It was amazing. Yeah, we it was loved a really cool that. spot, too. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, as a credible trip, life-changing. It was for, so good. So we many. should do it again. Yeah. We'd yep. love to have you guys. We would too. If only it wasn't so expensive. <laughs> I know, right? Tell me about it. Yeah. That's the problem. And so wow. this uh this this is a cool question. There we we really didn't predetermine where we were gonna go in this conversation. So I'm just gonna fire some random questions and see where we land, all right? Where did you two meet? You want me to go? Oh, wow, sure. <laughs> so we met in Bible college, actually. Steve was the head of the African prayer band, and I was the secretary. And he Can kept you calling that? me. That sounds so old school. It, it, it was old school. old school. So you met in groups to pray for different continents around the world. And we were both in the Africa oh. prayer band. And I was somehow nominated as a secretary, which if you know me, that's really not my gig. But anyway, Steve was the president. And he kept calling meetings. And I'm like, this guy is so <laughs> annoying. 
<laughs> Why do we keep it. having meetings? But he wanted to get to know me, and then yeah, we it. went out. I mean, there were pointless meetings, but right. it worked out. It did, yeah, obviously. It did. What's really a weird thing, though, is my grandparents in 1925 went to a tribe of cannibals in Africa as missionaries. Ironically, they were both in a Bible college, and my grandfather was the president of the Africa Prayer Band, and my grandmother was the secretary of Africa Prayer Band. So that it's really cool. weird how here yeah, we that are. Yeah, that is fast true. I forgot about that. You know, the not just the next generation, but the generation after that, and here we are in this old school kind of environment again. But again, I think the thing that was really cool about it is there was a commitment to prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. praying for Africa. Yeah, right. and you know, Africa has kind of got in both of our blood because both of us had separate experiences there. Um, and so we just kind of had a passion for that continent, and mm. we were supposed to be in a prayer band. Yeah, so we were. it kind of worked for us. So yeah. we got, when we I got, heard prayer band, out. I was thinking instruments. Yeah, I, was like, I did too. I was yeah. like, wait, explain drum. this, please. Yeah, right. the drum line, right? Yeah, <laughs> this worked. Right. Yeah, no. Yeah. That's incredible. Where where'd you guys go to Bible college? We it has since gone under. Um, it was a very conservative Bible college in Essex Fells, New Jersey called Northeastern Bible College. I mean, we weren't allowed to even hold hands on campus. Probably weren't even allowed to wear shorts. For us. <laughs> they measured oh your skirts <laughs> as you went into chapel. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want to show your knees, right? No, 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 exactly. No. Yeah, so we would go over the railroad tracks yeah. and kiss good night, and yeah. then go oh back on God. campus. That was really bad. It was really bad. And we miss curfew constantly. We're sneaking Steve in the building. Steve would bad. sneak me in this the is door. A Bible college. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, shows sinners. you God can do anything That's with right. people. Yeah. These are great people to pour into us. Yeah. Over the railroad <laughs> tracks. <laughs> right? Uh, this is awesome, man. And so, oh, so you guys met there, and you really met centered around prayer and, um, and a desire for the nations and mm -hmm. missions and ministry. You left there. I know you guys have pastored. You've did missions. Yeah. You, you write books and, and do all kind of really cool things for the Lord. Can you kind of just lay it out to us a little bit? And you got an amazing family, too, that we love dearly, that uh, the majority of them serving in ministry as well in some capacity, it seems like. It's evidence of the grace of God right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some railroad tracks. <laughs> I write. We've That's come right. a long way. So uh, let me start the story. Yeah. Um, so Steve, at, so we graduated that Bible college. Well, actually we didn't graduate yet, but a, a church contacted the Bible college and wanted somebody to come in and preach. So Steve went and preached and they liked him. So they asked him to candidate and we were just engaged. So I was in my home, he was in his, and the morning came for him to candidate. And I woke up sicker than a dog. Mm -hmm. So I called them and I'm like, oh, I can't go with you. Well, and they had been through 12 candidates. I thought Couldn't in my head, anybody. there's no way they're going to take you anyway. But anyway, <laughs> so sorry, I see a lot of confidence anyway, <laughs> so he's like, oh, no, you have to come with me. And so because we weren't married yet, I said yes. And we went down to that church. He got up to pray the pastoral prayer and I knew I was going to be sick. So I quick looked around that little tiny sanctuary and made sure every head was bowed and every eye was closed. And I was trying to plan my escape route. And there's really just no nice way to tell this story. I got right down in front, right in front of the communion table and puked all over. And oh, no. I just... <laughs> right in front of the no. entire church. Yeah. And I I'm mean, trying to I candidate. I mean, I'm trying to... So he just kept praying. These oh, yeah. women came and started cleaning me up. And I mean, and they voted him in 100 percent. To this yeah, day, we know it was vote. a pity it vote. It was a pity vote. And, and we <laughs> yeah. knew that, but we were OK with that. But you took it. <laughs> Whatever I mean, it took. Yeah. 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 You know what? God gave us four, four and a half really wonderful years at that little country church. Now, it was way off the grid, but it was an amazing experience. And it was a great way to start ministry. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so we're very from the inside for that. out. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. really, absolutely. Yeah, and it was an interesting ministry. I mean, we had we had a lot of memorable experiences. Yeah, in that we church. did uh, so out the gate. It sounds like really, it was, it was, it <laughs> and was. then from there we went to Sudan. Um, that was in the eighties, and the country not like New Jersey, not like New Jersey where I grew up, and um, the country was in a civil war. We were in an upstairs apartment. It was about 120 degrees every day. The The electricity would go out and the water would go off. Every day. You every know, day. And we had our oldest daughter 
like she was 10 months when we went there. And that was, that was really a rough go for me. Um, you did better there, but it was like, where have we come? We got to go home. Oh, especially <laughs> with a baby. Yeah. yeah. And then we had our son tough. there yeah, mm-hmm. he was and that there. was rough. What JJ, was really right? cool yeah, while yeah. we were there though, JJ, is that the yeah. government passed Sharia law, which means you're, if, even if you had a Christian name, like Steve, my name, or John, um, if you were a national and you had that name, that automatically implicated you as a Christian. Oh, wow. And you could be hauled off. And and there were rules like you couldn't you couldn't talk about Jesus, you couldn't share your faith. In fact, yeah. I had a guy come to my office one day and he said, I want to become a Christian. And of course, my natural implication was just I immediately want to share Jesus with him. But I thought I could I go to jail for this. Mm-hmm. So I actually had to have a contract typed up saying that. I didn't offer any information uh, except that he asked for it. And so I was only responding to his questions. And we were trying to figure um, out how do we hold this thing up in court? I mean, it was most crazy. It was a crazy season. And yet at the same time, we saw God do a lot of amazing mm-hmm. work. I mean, so we weren't allowed to talk to, to, to people that were, you know, from that country that had a Muslim background, but we were allowed to talk with refugees that fled across. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that was that was interesting. Yeah, and and mm. I was able to start a Bible study in the diplomatic community, and I had about fifteen women coming, and many of them came to know Christ. In fact, mm. it was interesting because, like, just like two years ago, Steve met this couple where he was teaching perspectives, and they're like, "Do you remember us?" And that's always a dangerous question. And yeah. Steve's like, "Well, help me out." And they're like, "We gave our lives to Christ under your ministry in Sudan, mm-hmm. you know." But there were wow. also some funny parts in Sudan, like when they put in Sharia law that meant alcohol was outlawed. So they dumped all the Johnny Walker in the Nile River, and then man-eating crocodiles came out for the first time in yeah, history. I mean, there hadn't been a crocodile fifty years in Khartoum, oh, and not man-eaters all the way. I mean, I saw one; I was like fifteen feet long. I was I stood right in front of it, oh and it. It was crazy. It was like the, the drunk crocs. I'll say, were they drunk? They were drunk. <laughs> it was hilarious. But again, we had such precious times there. And good, you know, God did amazing yeah. things. How that cool. would be incredible to watch and see drunk yeah. crocs. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I'd rather just hear about it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want to come face to face with that. Here in Ocean Way, you oh, can gosh. usually find <laughs> someone drunk in crocs. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, good point. Right, right. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> I don't know either. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Depends on the day. Yeah, right. <laughs> cool. Right. So, oh, goodness. So, so wow. you guys, fast forward to where you are now. Um, what are you two doing? Because you're still doing a lot. You guys, like retirement just really isn't an option for you no. guys. Yeah. You know. So yeah. do you want me to go first oh, sure. and then you sure. can go first? Uh, so we each do kind of our own thing and then we do things together. So for me, I am writing books, speaking, and coaching, and I love all three. So it's a lot of fun for me. So that's kind of what I'm doing, and I'm going to be helping out a local church near us with getting their women's ministry program going. And then tell them what you're doing, Yeah, so to me, I think at this chapter of my life, after 40 years of pastoring, and it was a great ride, we loved pastoring, but I feel like the Lord has called me to use the rest mm-hmm. of my life to raise up people and resources to fulfill the vision of Revelation 7-9. And that vision is where John looks up and he sees people from every tribe and tongue and nation worshiping before the throne. And we know that every nation, there's a believer in every nation of the world. We know that out of the, what, 3,902 or whatever it is, languages of the world, there's probably a believer that speaks just about every language of the world. Mm. But when you think about that word tribes or ethnic groups, there's still a lot of tribes that don't, they haven't heard the gospel. And so the the passion for me is how do I devote the rest of my life to finding people and resources and connecting them with global opportunities Mm. to fulfill the Great Commission. So we started an organization called Compel Global, which is basically eHarmony.com for missions. Anybody has an interest in in either giving or going uh, to, we've got strategic opportunities around the world where we connect people. And then we also, I also run a foundation um, called uh, St. Luke's Healthcare Foundation. And basically this is primarily focused on medical work in Ethiopia, uh, which is an amazing place. And it's a tremendous opportunity for people in the medical profession to get engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's just, that's kind of where we are at this point in our lives. It's really cool. It's cool. That chapter. is cool. We have a lot of fun and we never get bored. Yeah, it's Yeah, it awesome. doesn't sound like it. 
Yeah, it's so cool. I love that. Um, something I found a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, we, we've partnered up and connected with One for Israel. Mm, yeah, and I it, love it. And it's <laughs> one of our primary um, uh, Outreaches. missions that we partner yeah. with, mm-hmm. reaching mm. uh, Jewish people with the message of Ye- Yeshua. And One for Israel does a tremendous job. But man, it's crazy to think how overlooked they are as an unreached people group. I know. You're right. Yeah, because yeah. so, so many of them have never even heard of yeah. Yeshua. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I'm like, man, because you think about Israel and the Holy Land, mm-hmm. and yeah. right. it's like this super like spiritual place, and in our understanding, but it's extremely secular yeah. Yeah. Um, now. Yeah, and absolutely so. true. And what's really strange is, you know, when you think about the Muslim world, a billion people in the world would call themselves Muslims. Interestingly, the Quran mentions Jesus twenty times, and so there's there's a lot of references. In fact, the, the Quran only mentions Muhammad three times. So. Jesus is higher profile on the Quran. Hmm. So the Muslim world, this vast, you know, we think of them as being the unreached. The truth of the matter is that at least they have some exposure to the name Jesus. Right. Mm-hmm. right. But some people in Israel don't even have that exposure. That's crazy. And yet you go there and it's like, you know, it's amazing to go to the sites and see. Mm-hmm. And Beck and I have been to Israel many times. And, and honestly, we love going because it just confirms our faith every have time. Have you guys go. been yet? No, we want to go mm-hmm. so badly. Yeah, you need to go. It's great. What, it's great what, for your spiritual what formation. What year was it that you were... He was going to go there to play football. Wow. Yes, 2014 or 2015 with Team USA. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, the IFAF World Championships 5-on-5 uh, five five U.S. national team. <laughs> but they, they shut it down because of... Um, the Hamas stuff at the Gaza Strip, oh, which yeah, yeah. super yeah. elevated them. Yep. So they moved it and sent it to uh, Grosseto, Italy. Hmm. And, uh, wow. and so we were already locked in to go. So I, I went to Italy instead. Yeah. Wow. And then he wow. gets off the plane coming home from Italy. Easy, um, easy. This is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying okay. anything inappropriate. <laughs> it can be edited. Yes. <laughs> but I have never been to Italy. Yeah. You think... I mean, why? I'd love to go to Italy. Yeah. Well, when your husband gets off the plane and says, yeah, I'm never going back there again. Oh. You're like, oh, yes, you are. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yes, you are. There are places in Italy that are beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. Apparently he missed those. Oh, yes. oh man. So, it, oh. like, I didn't get to do any of the cool Italy stuff. Yeah. Except yeah. play football. I mean, that, I mean, but that's what I was going for. So yeah. it, it, I had, a, I still had a good time. But yeah. she was like, so how was it? I was like, ah, we can go somewhere else. <laughs> it's, <laughs> not what, that's not what you want to hear your husband been, say. Very limited exposure to Italy. What I was exposed to. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. He was Bummer. like, <laughs> that's was hilarious. Like, I asked for, didn't you ask for mozzarella cheese or something yeah. and it came out and he's like it came out in a ball <laughs> I was like, yeah. that's real mozzarella <laughs> yeah it's real mozzarella yeah I just yeah. bring the bag so I can <laughs> but they uh yeah it was like the size wow. of softball yep like here you go oh yep. man but it's fresh mozzarella there. it is that's true good that's stuff true. we do we do definitely want to go to israel though yeah yep one day yeah. one day and it so, definitely uh, it rocks your faith in a good way yeah you know, I mean, for us, for me, here, my spiritual journey, I, I feel like my spiritual gift is doubt. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you don't hear that, you don't see that in the list here in, you know, right. Romans or First Peter. But the truth of the matter is, I think I question everything in my faith. And, and so, and, and I intellectualize a lot of that doubt. So for me, I found going to Israel was one of the best things I ever did wow. in terms of really grounding my faith. First time I went to Israel, um, I was really struggling with okay, Lord, what do I believe? What am I willing to take a bullet for? And I'm walking mm-hmm. down a sea of Galilee and really wrestling with these things. And I, it was so weird because at the time, the church I was pastoring, they had a doctrinal statement with like 25 things on it. And they wanted me to sign it, which makes perfect sense, right? But I looked at that list and I said, Lord, I don't know if I'd take a bullet for... I how, what, what, what would I take a bullet for here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And finally, I confessed to the Lord, Lord, I, I'll probably take a bullet for four things on this big list of 25. And I said, I think I'd die for those four things. And, and I heard the Lord say, will you live for those four things? And that, that was a huge, profound change for me in, in my life. And it just opened up so much. So anyway, that happened in Israel. So I got a lot of precious memories there. That's awesome. that, that Romans 12, 1, you know, mm-hmm. that living sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, right. We, we forget mm-hmm. about that. It it's, looks like it could be both. 
and you know not one or the other death sacrifice living sacrifice right. but it it is as i mature and get older like you do like even 8 years into pastoring like i wrestle with especially what's happening in our country now like yeah. what am i willing to go to jail for yep. right. what are you willing to die for like right. it, and it, it shifts too once you have you get married and have kids yep. sure you're does. like yep. sure does for sure sure does it's a good question to ask yourself though well yeah. and i think one of the things like we've talked about is it's easy to hear, and especially in the Christian world, you hear from everybody about what they're against. Well, yes. But what yeah. are you for? Right. You know, right. And, and that's a lot of times when you're having those hard conversations, that's a better approach to express what you're for instead yeah. of coming at somebody with what you're against. Absolutely. You know? yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Also agree. keeping in perspective, too, like people aren't our enemy. You know, yeah. that's a, that's, that's a big deal because you, there are some things we will have to take a stand for mm-hmm. right. and, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, like a lot of stuff's going on that's, you know, just trying to attack our children right yeah. now mm-hmm. right. And, and we're right. going to have to stay in ground, but my issue isn't necessarily with people, it's with what influences people. And yeah. so mm-hmm. it's, you know, uh, demonic you know, strongholds and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. the, the prince of darkness. So remembering that, which is imperative. We got a lot of Christians that want to voice a lot on behalf of God, but it's like, okay, that's, that's a, that's a plea for influence. Mm. Well, it should come from a place of intimacy, mm-hmm. right? Right. Like, right. Right. At the end of the day, I'm called to be a witness Right. And so not necessarily the the judge or the prosecutor or anything right. like that. And if I if I'm just voicing it just because it's regurgitated or I've heard and it's no I'm I'm, I'm in this fist fight, it would be very easy to turn that into something natural instead of supernatural. Yep. Yeah. And so I think it's super important that we just keep driving our people in our church and people that um mm-hmm. that are around us like hey be intimate with the Lord, because yep. if you're intimate with the Lord, mm-hmm. you, you're going to get some supernatural yep. influence yep. Um, from that. And you know what's really I, cool? This is really cool. So Philippians, you know, Paul, Paul says this in Philippians chapter 3. Mm-hmm. You know, he talks about his own desire and the things that motivated him. And, and one of the things he says here is, you know, he talks about his desire to know Christ. And he said, uh, he said in Philippians 3 verse 10, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection mm-hmm. from the dead. Mm-hmm. But the thing that really hit me about that text, I remember it, it, we talked about Israel. I remember going into the garden tomb in Israel. And, of course, you know there's two different places where they say the resurrection took place, and you can have fine arguments about which one it is. But in the garden tomb, I, I went in there and I shut the door behind me. And here's this... Here's the slab where it's thought that the body of Christ lay. Uh, and, I, and, and there was a candle there. And I was just sitting in that room praying. And I said, Lord, I want the focal point of my life to know Christ. And then I went on from there and I said, and I want to know his power in my life. And, you know, his resurrection power. And, and I was reflecting on this all alone in that room. And in that moment, the Lord said, yes, Steve, I know you want to know me. I know you want to know my power, but do you want to know the fellowship of my suffering? Mm-hmm. And that was it. To me, that was a really another one of those formative moments in my walk with God because, you know, I think we, 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 we get so caught up in the power of God, and the, you know, seeing God do this and seeing God do that, but are we really willing to enter into the sufferings of being united with Christ? And that's, that's a whole other, that's a whole other ballywick for mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. You know. And, it, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about what you were saying about the things that you take a stand for. And um, the deeper we go in falling in love with Jesus, the more that flows out of you to other people. And mm-hmm. you become less judgmental. It's not that you're not discerning. You discern the difference between right and wrong, but you're less judgmental of people. You realize, hey, we are all sinners in need of grace. And the deeper we fall in love with Jesus, the more we're able to look at others out of the overflow of that full heart, you know, where we're really able to love them like Jesus did. I mean, when you look at who Jesus hung out with, 
He mm-hmm. hung out with sinners, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's what we need to be about. We need to be really loving people like he did. Yeah, for sure. And, and he he did a tremendous job mm-hmm. because you know he didn't he didn't waver either on, right. on what was right and mm-hmm. wrong. Right. Right. But right. somehow. He 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 was really good about chasing people off if he needed to, mm-hmm. but they a lot of them came back too. Yeah, like they would still come yeah. back around, right? And see, we well, got to be careful with that in yeah. this season for sure. And I think that the the issue lies in with with today's society and a lot of people they want the love but they don't want the truth. Mm-hmm. That's so true. you mm-hmm. you can love people. But just like Jesus loved people, he never watered down the truth. Mm-hmm. He never turned away from the truth. It was always it was always on the tip of his tongue. Mm-hmm. It was always a discussion um, that he would have with people. And I think sometimes in, we we sacrifice the truth on the altar of love because yeah. we want right. to love them so well, but we don't want to offend them. Right. Well, the gospel, if you're mm-hmm. living in sin, the gospel is going to offend you. Yes. It's going to be offensive. Yes. It's going to convict. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where we have to, especially in the church, because it goes back to the, you know, not not harping on everything you're against, but what are you for? Because there's a lot of sin that's in our faces right now, and it seems like it just mm-hmm. is is becoming more evident mm-hmm. and, and more forward, especially yes. for our kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we have to be willing to have those uncomfortable conversations yeah. in love while still standing on truth. And, you know, if you're really loving people, you're going to tell the truth, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because when we don't love people, we tell them what they want to hear. Well, they, 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 they equate <laughs> we love we don't to tell acceptance. Them anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They accept, they think, okay, well, if you love me, you'll accept me the way right. I am. Well, right. well, we can love you and still... Mm-hmm push you to walk out of that sin that you're living under that yeah. you have yeah. accepted yeah, totally. in your life. You know, I just, I'm struck by what it tells us in John chapter one, mm-hmm. where Jesus is reflection of the father's heart, mm-hmm. but it talks about how he was full of grace, grace and, and truth. truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that curious blend of those two. So he, he loved well so that he could earn the right to say the hard things. Right. Mm-hmm. And how do we, and how do we do that? How do we, and how does the church do that? You it's, know, love well, so people never have to question that, and they're still drawn to the Christ they see in us, but at the same time, take a stand for the truth. That's the challenge. I think you just don't stop serving them, yeah. even if they don't I believe think, yeah. us. Investment. You, it. That's you, key. It. you have to establish that relationship first. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because if we see someone <laughs> who's outwardly, mm. openly living in sin, like we're not going to immediately correct their lifestyle, mm-hmm. we're going to make an investment in who they are. Mm-hmm. And you build that relationship. That's and good. you guys do that really well. I mean, mm-hmm. we've met incredible people who have been touched by your ministry, whose lives were maybe really sinful or really were in the tank and they were desperate, but you reached out to them. You loved them well. And as a result, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. 10 years later, they're walking closely with Jesus. And, you know, just like the closer you walk with Jesus, the more you love people, Mm -hmm. the closer you walk with Jesus, the more holy your life becomes, you know, not in a judgmental way, but you realize, no, I want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he was Mm -hmm. completely holy. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I always say when it comes to Jesus and like holiness, you know, like, you can't achieve holiness on your own, right? Right, right. So he he is the the imagery of holiness, how he lived. I mean, it's yeah. it's him. Yeah. So the closer I get to him, it's like a like a Rubs like off. a yeah, it's a strong cologne. It's gonna get on me, yeah. and I don't have to. I don't necessarily have to intentionally like plot out a course for holiness. Yeah. If I just stay close and intimate mm-hmm. with Jesus, yep. Yep. there that's the transformation from glory to glory. And yeah. Like yeah. people will be able to see something. And it doesn't mm. make me better than anyone. Right. Mm-hmm. It should just become contagious. Like yeah. holiness right. shouldn't be something that that people look at and say, mm, it's build a wall. It should be something mm. that they should want to catch and walk in as well. Right. When Amen. it's carried Amen. in the right Amen. way. Amen. Yeah. And I think being real and authentic, yeah. remembering, key. like not forgetting your days of mm-hmm. salvation. Mm-hmm. Like people always take that that text where Paul says, you know, forget the past, right? Mm-hmm. For like mm-hmm. uh, uh, I strive on pressing on, right? right? Uh, forgetting the the former things. Well, God hasn't erased my memory from my past. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. Right. I'm not in bondage to. Mm-hmm. Um, right. 
uh, what what that costs any longer. Um, I'm set free from it, but I have not forgot the, yeah. the mud that he rescued yeah. me out of. Yeah. Well, I think, again, you know, we can look at that text, but also there's verses in the scripture that tells us to remember. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think, it, but it, the key is in what you said, not letting the past control or continue mm. or determine mm. your future. Yeah, that's good. So I want to pivot a little bit here. So you guys, um, how many kids do you have? Like we have four. 3,000? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have almost like 3,000 3, grandkids, yeah. though. We have four <laughs> kids. They're all married, and now we have 14 grandchildren. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, so ministry. So this could possibly d- be difficult for people who aren't in full-time vocational ministry mm-hmm. to connect to. I say that so that it'll kind of give us a little headway of like, mm-hmm. all right, we want to... Most people that are going to listen to this probably aren't pastoring or right. they might be small right. group leaders, serve right. team leaders, yeah. faithful in church, mm-hmm. or maybe not, who knows wh- where they are. So knowing all the different places that you guys have served, worked, lived different cultures mm. and raised a family up in them, like you guys have experienced, like some of the things that we're starting to experience now, uh, you guys probably have already experienced overseas and stuff. How do you navigate that? as as husband and wife and as mom and dad like hey our kids are exposed to things mm-hmm. that we don't necessarily agree with mm-hmm. principles we don't agree with thoughts that mm-hmm. we don't agree with um how do you navigate that as christian parents like leading your family through mm-hmm. that you know one of the things mm-hmm. that we did i mean we do joke a lot and say if we were going to write a book on parenting it would be called blackmail bribery and a whole lot of prayer <laughs> Because that's I feel basically that. yeah. the way we raised our kids. But one of the things that we did do is we picked a foundational couple of verses for our family life because we wanted something to root in. And so the foundational verses for our family were Proverbs 24, 3 and 4, where it says, by wisdom, a house is built through understanding it is established through knowledge. Its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. And that was, that became the vision for our home. So that meant we had to continually go to God for wisdom. Lord, you see what this child is facing. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So give us wisdom because you promise you'll do that. And then offering understanding. I mean, kids' emotions get so tangled living in this culture because they want to be loving in their school. They're being taught (laughs) things that perhaps are very anti-biblical. And so Lord, help me to become a safe place where my children can process their feelings, help me to Mm -hmm. understand them. And then through knowledge, you know, we like to tell parents, become a student of your child because every single child is different, right? I mean, we had four kids. They were all different. You have four kids. They're all all different, different, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So become a student of them and figure out what they like, what makes them tick, how they calm down, when they get revved up, you know, what works with one child doesn't necessarily work with another, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. That's really good. So uh, Mm -hmm. reference that scripture again, Proverbs Proverbs 24, three and four. Man, what phenomenal verses to shape, like Mm -hmm. just a, just a a vision for your Mm -hmm. family around. Yeah. And, and to remind yourself because that scripture and doing what you said too, I think a lot of us, because we don't know and we don't understand, we'll just want to out of sight, out of mind. I'll yep. just get it out of sight and out of mind and not deal with it. You yeah. Know? Yep. yeah. But eventually we're we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. And right. And well, I think sometimes too, as parents, you want to fix things and yes. yeah. some things don't need to be fixed. They just need to be heard. Uh, yes. You know, um, and that's uh, often when we talk about feelings and big emotions, as we call them in our house. I think about our Maylee. And that's one of the things, like a lot of times she doesn't even know why she's upset. Mm. So she can't articulate it. And I know as adults, I mean, I can speak for me anyway. I know I have moments where I'm upset or I'm sad or I'm just in a Mm. funk and I don't know why. And I can't articulate it. So I can't expect her to be in a six-year-old, um, even as big of a vocabulary as she does Mm -hmm. have, um, but talking through, okay, I know you're having some some big feelings right now. And mm-hmm. I know like you 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 you're sad and you don't know why, and that's okay. You know, but then kind of helping her through that, but not trying to fix it in that yep. moment. Right. Yeah, I, I think a good phrase um that we tried to use with our kids, and I, I really learned this from you, Steve, is the phrase tell me more. 
Mm. You know, when your kid's having that irrational, complete meltdown, they can't receive any logic no, from you no. as a parent because it's the, it's the other side of their brain, right? They're having a massive meltdown. But the words tell me more are very inviting, yeah. you know, like just dump mm. on me, baby. It, I, I'm i just going to listen. I'm not going to fix. And, mm -hmm. you know, we like to fix our kids, but they don't want to be fixed. No. They want to be heard, yeah. valued, and understood. Yeah. And I think uh, looking back, you know, we had a, we had one of our children was especially uh, big negotiator, emotions. big emotions, mm -hmm. strong-willed, yeah. opinionated, all the rest I feel of like it. I know Steph really well this way. <laughs> yeah, Just, you do. Every time I hear you negotiator, like, Steph. She's, <laughs> Steph. She is uh, she's such a powerful leader now she and would appreciate so passionate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she would. She but would. We had, I mean, for us, we had to learn how to, how do we handle those, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, those Pepper powerful spray. outbursts. And <laughs> the beauty, yeah, exactly. But the beauty of it is I think we, we tag team a lot. Yeah. And there were times when, you know, Beck would be really frustrated and, you know, trying to figure out how to, I mean, you remember these. Move forward. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then there were times and just, you know, I just held her in my arms. Just, mm -hmm. just hold her. You're not, it's pointless to have a debate. Conversation yeah. not going to happen. We also did learn though, the power of, you talked about, tell me more. I think another thing is that we learned a lot about was to give them a voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That and was big. We did that like, with, with each of our children. One of one of the stories. <laughs> hopefully, Steph's okay with me sharing all this. But she's an amazing woman of God right now, and such a strong leader. So she's a blessing to everybody that meets her. But you know, I had just come home from a speaking engagement. It was, I think, it was a Saturday because Steve was getting ready to preach the next day. I was getting home from speaking. Steph was about twelve. She came bounding down the stairs and had this brilliant idea. And I just remember praying like, Lord, give me mercy. Help me not, you know, and it would start with don't say no yet, mom. Oh my gosh. And, oh, we heard that phrase over and, and over and over again. Will you so, just let me finish before yeah. you say no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep. and, and so she wanted a TV in her room. Now this went against everything Steve and I believed as parents, mm -hmm. right? We wanted the TV in the family room. Thankfully, the Lord gave me wisdom in that moment. And I said, Steph, I want you to go up on the computer. We had just gotten a computer. We this said, sounds like the dark ages. Yeah. <laughs> so we coming. said, go up on the computer. And I said, I want you to write me a proposal for why you think you need a TV in your room. It's got to have good paragraph structure, good sentence structure, wow. punctuation. She went up and worked on that proposal for two hours. Then she came down and presented it to Steve and I. And we sent her out of the room so we could have, you know, our conversation. And Steve goes, Beck. I don't know what we're going to do. This is really good. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, she nailed it. It was shocking. So uh, Steve said, okay, I know what to do. We have a black and white 25-inch <laughs> so, TV oh. in the garage that only works on two channels. <laughs> so we'll tell her, okay, you can have it in your room. And I think she watched no, it she once and then she was over it, you know, but yep. she felt like she won. Yeah. So the power of a proposal is really a good way to get them to share their voice. Yeah, I was just going to say with you saying that it brought to mind because I read your book, um, How to How to Listen, listen so, so Your, your kids, kids Will Talk. talk. Yeah. yeah, and that had a lot of really good, um, and, and it was, it's simple, but it, it's things like it just puts it in a different perspective and, and advice so that you can have those conversations with your kids that are productive, mm -hmm. that, you know, you're not just hearing them so that they're heard and then you send them on their way, but it's creating that safe place for them mm -hmm. to talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, you know, a lot of these kids that are negotiators as toddlers, you know, and that are negotiators, I'll tell you what, Steph was our absolute strongest teenager, you know, because she would be like, that's a stupid thing to do. I'm not doing that. You right. know, I'm walking with Jesus. So she was firm in her walk, you mm -hmm. know, and just learning that. I, I think for me, I learned about Steph, you know, she has the anointing of Deborah on her life. Mm -hmm. She's a strong leader mm -hmm. and she's going to raise up. She's going to change the world for Jesus Christ and she's doing it, yeah. you know. And I have to say, the best part is when they have kids that are just like Payback. them, oh, you payback. get to Enjoy. sit back and laugh. <laughs> yeah, payback. So a couple things that you guys said that um, I'm just sitting over here processing through like, hey, just a normal guy is trying to spiritually be involved mm. in my family and lead. Mm. So a couple things that you guys said about the listening. Uh, 
and uh, the tell me more and just catching it and sitting. One thing I had a thought about is it's important for us to be emotionally and spiritually healthy as well, because you won't be willing to catch that from your kids if mm-hmm. you got mm-hmm. a bunch of turmoil going on in your yep. own head, in your own life, right? Yeah. And and that'll overwhelm you and you won't want to hear it. Yeah. Um, also, you said every kid's different. So some you've, you've got to switch up your tactics um, mm-hmm. in approaching and leading them because they're not, and I think they're, they're not all the same. I think we try to put them all in the same shoebox and yeah. <laughs> doesn't work. fit. And so the way you discipline one, the way you lead mm-hmm. one, it might be different for mm-hmm. another, which mm-hmm. requires that as parents that we don't stop growing, stop yep. learning, yeah. stop paying attention. Um, and it also requires all of this that we're present, mm-hmm. like we're actually yep. there yes. and we care. Yep. Because the reality is this, they're going to get led by somebody somewhere. Yep. Yep. Somehow. Yep. 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 And so yep. we want to make sure we're in the most pivotal position to, to, to be doing that. Yeah. I think today's parent, you know, has more challenges in that area, even than we did, you know, because now we have this crazy invention called the cell phone, right? Mm-hmm. So your emails coming in 24 seven, you've got Instagram, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got Snapchat, TikTok, right? And you go to a park nowadays and every now and then I like to just pause and look, look at all the parents in that park. And what are they doing, you know? They're all on their phones, right? And we we got to put our phones away right. and just focus in on those kids because they're growing up so fast. You know, we had an answering machine back in the day on our landline. So yeah. we could set the answering machine during dinner. There's greater challenges for y'all because it's so addictive. Addictive. We we read this book this past year called Ruthlessly Eliminate Hurry. You yeah, know, we'll and yep, it, we'll it's so good. Such a great book. But he talks about the dopamine hit mm-hmm. of your brain when somebody likes your Facebook posts, right? Yeah. So you've got the mama or the daddy checking Facebook, Instagram, and they're getting a dopamine hit every mm-hmm. time they get that like. You got to put it away yep. and ask Jesus to give you the dopamine hit from looking in your child's eyes, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. and just really enjoying them. Mm-hmm. Well, even going, you said that about the park, you even go to a restaurant and you look yep. around and a family will be sitting around the table and mm-hmm. every single one of them, even the kids are on their phones. Yep. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking to me. And that's something like for us that we, we really try. It's, it's super important to me is at, at dinner time, yeah. like put it away. Yep. Let's talk to each other. Let's have conversation. That can be our safe place. You know, tell us about your day, that kind of thing, because the reality of it is we're always connected. Yeah. Always. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it, it's, it can be such a good thing, but then it can be such a negative thing too. Yeah. Um, and especially with the things that come across your feed, you know, the, the things that you allow in. Yeah. And it's it, it will shift your your mentality and your thinking. And I just found for me that when I'm on social media for an extended period of time, I'm more anxious. I'm yep. more irritable. Yep. I, I don't have my peace. Lots. And so yep. I actually, I, I just went, um, I haven't had Facebook in years, but on Instagram, I just went and I unfollowed everybody. Um, I followed Except me. I followed my husband. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. When I told him I did this, he said, "Yeah, but you're still following me, right?" <laughs> I, was like, I will. Yeah, I will. Let me go follow you. <laughs> but church stuff, um, I I follow you. Oh well, um, thanks. You're welcome. But but it helped significantly because yeah. if, if I get on to share a church post mm. or something, I don't catch myself simply scrolling. scrolling. Right. Yeah, because right. that just opens up the doorway to all. Uh, I mean, comparison. I mean, it just oh, yeah. all the things. It does. Yeah. And you said something that I really love, Tiff, that I want to bring the conversation to is the dinner table is Mm. so important. And I know it's a challenge because your kids have sports and they have activities and, you know, maybe you hate to cook. That's okay. Go pick up a rotisserie chicken at Costco, right? Right. Um, But that dinner time is so pivotal to your mm-hmm. family because not only are you listening to your kids, but you're creating memories, mm-hmm. you know, and make it fun. Mm-hmm. Don't be too strict with dinner, you know, don't worry about all manner of manners, you know, make it fun. Ask them when they felt like a hero. Yeah, and- we, we definitely don't do a whole lot of manners. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's okay. Our kids will go to my parents. They're like, um, 
you know, Liam was making himself burp at the table. Oh, like, that's yeah. okay. We kind of laugh about that. That comes from mom. <laughs> yeah, yes. it does. Real quick, real quick, wow. anyone from Costco, we gave you a plug. You could just email us for sponsorship <laughs> at info <laughs> yeah, at right. Right. <laughs> church. Yeah, because y'all have an wow. amazing chicken pot pie, by the way. Yeah, I mean, they have chicken. chicken pot pie. That is yeah. really okay. good. I don't even eat them unless it's from there. It's really good. He would, he'll eat it that is. over homemade. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So, but here's something to bring this conversation back. However, one of the things that we really valued about family time around the dinner table is like we'd ask our kids, give us three things that you're thankful for today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top three things. And even today, Becky and I have that habit when it's just the two of us. We yeah. have a notebook in the middle of the table and we pull it out and we write down what are the top three things you're thankful for today? Mm-hmm. Because we want to instill in our own attitude and in the attitudes of our kids a posture of gratitude and positivity. Yeah. 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 So uh, Carrie's young, uh, oldest, Noah, was over um, several months ago for dinner and we got up. We, we had finished dinner and he's like, wait, Mimi. And I'm like, what's the matter, buddy? And he's like, we didn't do our three blessings. <laughs> it was sweet. so sweet. That you is know? Sweet. So way down to the youngest child, they can come up with what they're thankful for. Yeah. yeah. And you, we're training them now. Mm-hmm. To do yeah. that stuff. Right. And, and it's it's also, I mean, it's like David encouraging yourself in the Lord, right? It's also the greatest way to enter into worship is with Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. And and so many people show up to church on Sunday, can't enter in worship because they, they feel overwhelmed or, you know, and, mm. and they're overstimulated and they bad news, no news, whatever. Right. And it's like, well, if you just stop, even in the middle of bad news... Mm. You can still see God's yeah. goodness. There's something to be grateful of. Yeah. I love what Tiff does, man. Tiff will get a holistic approach of their day when she picks them up. She's like, give me your pit, give me your praise, right? Yeah. Yeah. What Good. was something that was awesome? Good. What was something that was difficult? Yeah. And yeah. to initiate that conversation to That's get us awesome. involved That's in great. the spaces that we weren't mm-hmm. in with them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and it's it's been really good, especially now That's that the, the, you know, the six and the eight-year-old, they're there's, there's a lot they want to talk about. Yeah. yeah, and it gives them an opportunity because obviously, yes, we want our, our heart to be in a posture of thanksgiving. Mm. But I also want them to know it's okay to acknowledge the yes. bad things, yep. the hard yep. things, the difficult yep. things. And what I've learned too, especially with JC, Maylee, she will tell you everything and every detail. JC is going to be a little more guarded in that. So there was, she was having an issue at school and I found out about it through our pit and praise conversation Mm. because it came up as her pit. And I said, Mm. they kind of tell me more, baby, what do you mean by that? You know, what happened? And so we were able to initiate a conversation and kind of work through this situation. Um, But I want them to recognize like, it's okay to admit when things hurt. It's okay yes. to admit when yeah. things don't go the way you want them to go or, you know, you, you feel some type of way about something. But I also want you to recognize even in the bad, there's always something to be joyful about. Good. Like good. there's always something yep. good that God provides. You know, sometimes I think we probably inadvertently didn't give our kids enough space to really express the hard things, you know, the Mm. really hurtful things. So I'm thrilled that you're doing that. You know, studies have been done that if a child processes a traumatic event and trauma can come in the form of hurt feelings at school or a bully or, I mean, it can, there's a whole range of trauma, but if a child processes that trauma out loud, I think it's in the first like day or two, they have a much better chance of moving past Mm. that. Mm. It's the traumas we don't process that hang around and bite us later. You know, we we try to forget about them, but they create patterns and behaviors. We respond certain ways and it just Mm. becomes the norm. We don't even realize like we're handcuffed by them things. Yep. And we have did a lot of unpacking in in my life with that for sure. Mm. But I think being grateful and, and setting up situations for success for your family about what really matters is more about principle than than convenience and mm-hmm. feelings, right? right? Right. And we live in a culture today that mm-hmm. is just do what you feel. Change yep. to whatever you feel like changing whatever makes to, you right? Happy. And right. uh and that is so deadly. Mm-hmm. That is so toxic. Um because we know feelings are so fleeting and mm-hmm. so easily swayed yeah. and moved. But principle putting our phone away, right? Having dinner at the table. Tiff's such mm-hmm. an advocate for that. Mm-hmm. I I grew up in a place where you just ate wherever you were. Mm-hmm. You're lucky yeah. to have people around yeah. a table type yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but being intentional, creating those principles, having the conversations uh, with your kids, starting off with gratitude, with thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. A lot. I mean, I've been there before. I've been in a situation where I'm like, I don't feel like being thankful right now. Mm-hmm. However, if it's a principle, it becomes a non-negotiable. Right. Right. You could feel like, I don't feel like brushing my teeth. It's a mm-hmm. principle. Mm-hmm. If not, you will feel something. It's yeah. called cavities, root <laughs> canals, <laughs> and stuff like that eventually. Right. But like mm-hmm. principles set us up for the long mm-hmm. haul. Right. Feelings, they set us up for a moment and usually will lead us to a disaster if we're not careful. I think a lot of families, um, I think now is the time to really discover, like, what's your principles? Yep. Yeah, that's you know, good. not, not that's just good. what you're what you're feeling, yeah. because if right. everything if you're leading your family based off of your feelings, mm-hmm. it'll be when it's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yep. be when you're not tired, yeah. um, when you're not distracted. Mm-hmm. Right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to model like. Man, kids, you do whatever you feel at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, and man, that's just setting us up for a disaster. That is a really, yeah. really good insight. You know, to, to have your family guided by those principles, and have a family meeting where you decide those principles. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that Proverbs scripture. You know, yeah. was it Proverbs twenty four, three, three and, four? and four? Yep. I mean, right there, you can. That'll help you. That'll help all of us set out our principles. Right. Yeah. Right. Like from that, you can design your principles and then they just become non-negotiables. Yeah. Like, hey, we go after these things as a family. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray. We're going to be grateful. We're going to eat together. We're going to talk together. You know, all of those things. And having it out in front of the kids too, so that Mm -hmm. you can have those conversations. And when you have those hard days and you're talking about Mm -hmm. the things, you know, the pits, so to speak, like referencing that scripture, like, okay, well, how can we move forward from Mm -hmm. this? How can Mm -hmm. we grow from this so that we can still, as a family unit, focus on what's important, you know, the the, the values that we have within our home. Some people will argue, um, I've heard it said before, like it's just, it's a little overbearing and you're kind of controlling. And my, my rebuttal to that is always like, well, if I don't control my family, somebody else will or something Mm -hmm. else will. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, if I am the shepherd of my family, right, these are my sheep to keep Mm -hmm. in the pasture Mm -hmm. that we believe by principle that Mm -hmm. God's called Mm -hmm. us to be in. If, if I, if I don't, they'll find another pasture or they will walk off a cliff Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. and then I will be left, you know, trying to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, I think we need to stop looking at leadership as control. It's like, it's, it's not a, it's, it's leadership is what God's called us to be in. Shepherding, yeah. Influence. And influence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think about there were some of our other kids, so we talked about our negotiator who was the real strong-willed one. Mm-hmm. But our other children, they were all unique in their own way. But I remember our oldest daughter was really struggling with spiritual doubt. And rather than being panicked by that, our approach was, well, in fact, I'd sit down with her and I went through the book uh, Invisible Reaching God. Reaching for the Invisible for God the Invisible by God Philip Yancey. And she felt unjudged, but she felt like, let's, let's talk about this. Let's figure this out. Um, and so that, that was a powerful thing for her. And I think our, yeah. our youngest daughter, uh, I wound up taking her to Israel, circling mm-hmm. back to that conversation, took her to Israel for a week um, to do a faith journey together. And oh, that created cool. a very powerful memory in her life. But I'm at sure. the same time, I think it really established a strong spiritual foothold. That's also shepherding your family. It is. Will it you is. take me on a faith journey? To Israel. I'll Please. take you on one to Callahan. I'll <laughs> <laughs> well, strengthen my faith. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really cool to hear, man. Because we, you know, I don't like, I've thought about that too mm. with Maylee. Maylee, mm. we, we had a long conversation about the Noahic covenant one time. That wow. wasn't a conversation. Wow. It, well, yeah, wow. She, she preached a mini message. Debate. Wow. And, and so she tried to understand. Well, if he said he's never going to flood the earth again, why does our yard get flooded? <laughs> wow. That's a valid That's question. Yeah. That's a very melee question too. Yeah. Good for her. But she's strong, strong-headed, yeah. Yeah. strong-willed. And I like I don't want to panic in those moments yeah. no. because I you just said you were in one. Yep. I've been in one before yep. too, mm-hmm. like where it's like, "Oh man, hold on. What do I actually believe?" Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. We yeah. did learn that if she becomes a preacher someday, she's going to be an angry preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. She, Maybe she was, not. I have it recorded. I'll have to share it with y'all sometime. It's, it was funny. Very yeah. prophetic preacher. Prophetic. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, listen, let's wow. land this plane. We've been doing this. Uh, yeah. We could do it all day. We've been doing it for a good little bit, man. 
first off, thank you guys for yeah. giving oh, us the time. Thanks, thanks for having us on. Yeah, I hope you've yep. enjoyed it, man. We did. And uh, and our church is blessed by you, and mm-hmm. Tiffany and I and our family mm-hmm. definitely is. Well, as well. we love, we love you, guys. you guys. We and love Bold City, and mm-hmm. we love your kids. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome. Cool to watch them. Too. You can have them. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, you but don't it's really cool to watch the way they love. You can bring them back to the weekend. We'll take weekend visitations. No, or I mean, can y'all have us for weekend visitations <laughs> in Colorado? Yeah, right. <laughs> cool, man. Well, we hope oh, well. you guys have enjoyed this today. And listen, if you if you if you have, man, would you like leave, leave a rating uh, or share it uh, with your friends or family or on social media? Leave a cool comment. Um, oh, and listen, even like and subscribe down below. <laughs> <laughs> Do what she did, and listen. <laughs> Even if you want to connect to, to Steve and Becky in some way, if yes. they said something, we'll we'll put a, a way up for you guys to be able to do cool. that. Email them cool. or yeah. something cool. like that. Be able to find your books and yep. what you're up to yeah. these days. Yeah. And oh, by the way. Thanks, guys. Uh, a, a plug. Becky does a daily. Uh, a, a devotional. Not a daily. A, sorry, a weekly, weekly devotional. That's true. You and can the sign up for that. Um, yeah. You can sign up for that at. Uh, BeckyHarling.com. There you go. There's a free gift right now up there. So you just register for the free gift and then you start getting my Monday morning devotional. Awesome. Sweet. Cool. So cool. there you go. There's there's where you find them. BeckyHarling.com. If you find Becky, you'll find Steve. All right? <laughs> He's so, always nearby. That's right. Love Thanks. you guys. Have a good week. Thanks for tuning in to the Bold City Podcast. To learn more about us, visit us at BoldCity.Church or download the Bold City Church app. To support this ministry and help us continue to reach people all around the world, visit boldcity.church/give.